Hello guys, hope you're well. Today we're going to be looking at one of the new civilizations that's just been introduced into the game with the Age of Empires 2 Dawn of the Dukes DLC expansion pack. And this one we're going to be looking at the Poles. So the Poles are being described as a cavalry civilization. Their bonuses include the, the fact that villagers are able to regenerate health. So they regenerate 5 HP per minute in the Dark Age, 10 in the Feudal Age, 15 in the Castle Age, and 20 in the Imperial Age, which could uh, could be quite valuable actually. Um, certainly you know, 20 HP per minute if you're able to uh, escape from uh, some raids that are coming in. And you'd certainly assume that they're going to be generating health whilst they're being attacked. So then they, uh, may be able to get away a little bit easier than perhaps they would do ordinarily. Uh, we do have the full walk which uh, replaces the mill, we'll have a little look at that one later. And stone miners generate gold in addition to stone which seems like a little bit of a crazy bonus to me. I can see that bonus being removed at some point in the future, it just seems a bit weird. So the unique units we've got the obuk or the obuch. I'm going to just keep buttering that pronunciation. And then we've got the Winged Hussar, which we all know about. Uh, so really keen to see what the stats are for that one and how they compare to a normal Hussar. For the unique text, we've got the Slack to Privileges, which means that Knights cost 60% less gold, which is going to be nuts. That's going to be around 30 gold uh, per Knight. But at least it's a unique tech and not, and not a general Civ bonus. That's the only sort of saving grace we've got with that one. So there is going to come a cost to that. However, when your stone miners are generating gold, it's going to make it a little bit easier to be able to do that. Uh, so following on from that, we've got the Lekitic uh, Legacy. I still can't pronounce that one. Uh, which means that light cavalry line deal trample damage. So light cavalry and the winged hussar are going to be dealing trample damage. So as a team bonus, the Scout, Cavalry, Light Cavalry and Hussar all receive plus one attack versus Archers. So again, another boost to the Winged Hussar, which they may prove to be a little bit OP. Uh, but out of the two civilizations that I've looked at so far, the Pole certainly seems that they're going to be the OP Civ out of the two. Okay, so we'll just start off, have a little look at their tech tree. So as you can see with the Archer line, we've got all the way up to our blast. Uh, they are actually going to be fully upgradable. So they've got all the blacksmith techs, all the university techs, we've got thumb ring. Um, so that's probably going to be one of the key units for the uh, poles backed up with winged hussar. Skirmishes fully upgraded, cav archers fully upgraded apart from Parthian tactics. So then if we have a look at the barracks we've got fully upgraded champions. We are missing halberdier, however we do have pikemen and obviously we don't have eagle scouts but we do have squires, arsons and supplies. Looking at the cavalry options that they've got. Uh, obviously you've got the winged hussar and you've got cavalier. We do have bloodlines, we've got husbandry and none of the other sort of special units but there's no paladin uh, which I would suggest is probably a good thing uh, since they've got the winged hussar and as, as I say I think certainly an, an army composition of uh, orbs and winged hussar is going to be very very strong. Now just to have interest let's have a look at the stats. So it's going to cost 600 food and 800 gold to upgrade so it's going to be a little bit more expensive than uh, getting the generic Hussar upgrade and uh, we've got 9 attack, 1 melee armor and 2 pierce armor and we've got 80 health. Let's just have a look at the Mongols. So as you can see um, there's going to be quite a, a sizable cost increase but we've got uh, 75 HP so they're going to have 5 more HP, they've got 2 more attack, they've got 1 more melee armor uh, but the pierce armor is the same. So moving on to siege Pretty good siege workshop, just missing siege on during the heavy scorpion. They do have siege ram, however, and they've got the bombard cannon as well. In terms of the blacksmith, they are missing the final archer armor. The rest of the uh, blacksmith looking pretty good. Uh, again, there is going to be a missing tech for the calf though, actually, so a little bit of a, a nerf to sort of stop them being OP. They're not going to get that final um, plate barding armor upgrade, uh, but we do have full upgrades for the infantry. Uh, the dock's looking fairly straightforward, it's not looking outstanding, but uh, it does have fast fire ships and it does have galleon, so it should be able to hold its own on water maps. So looking at the university, we are missing a few techs here, heated shot, which I'm sure nobody ever researches, architecture and siege engineers. So siege engineers could be a, a big one, 
uh, and so could ar architecture. Could be big ones to miss there. Fully upgraded towers and walls, and then looking at the uh, the unique uh, techs and uh, units in the castle. Uh, so uh, the O book looks pretty decent. 80 uh, HP, uh, eight attack, two melee armor, two pierce armor. Cost 55 food, 20 gold. Pretty decent. That's not bad. Barely, uh, you know, it's not going to be overly expensive or overly cheap. And the upgrade for the elite is 800 food, 600 gold. Again, not too bad. It's going to get it another 15 HP, another two attack. Then we've got the selector privileges, which uh, severely uh, cuts the uh, cost of the knights down. Um, I think that's going to need a bit of a a bit of a nerf at some point because. Uh, the cost there 500 food and 300 gold which you, you're going to be able to very very quickly make that 300 gold back once you've researched that and then we've got the electric letitic <laughs> legacy um so to get trample damage 750 food and 550 gold again that's not, not a bad price it's not overly expensive it's not cheap but it's not overly expensive at all so um, certainly a, a doable one you might see even that one get uh, a little bit of a cost increase in the future uh, but we do get all the other upgrades for the castle uh, monks certainly not going to be their strongest point they are missing a few texts such as heresy atonement and illumination and uh, we do get fully upgrades uh, or full upgrades in the town center uh, pretty much full upgrades in the mining camp apart from gold shaft mining we are missing two Mansour, which uh, could be a bit of a, um, a downer for them, but they do get Bone Saw. Market fully upgraded, and the Fulwark has full upgrades as well. But let's have a look at what the Fulwark actually does. So it's a unique building of the poles, and it's used to deposit food and research farming tech. So, yep, same as the mill. It immediately collects 10% of food from nearby newly constructed farms. Uh, provides five population and build near forage bushes or other sources of food to gather food faster. Okay, so does that mean that there's a collection rate increase for berry gatherers and farmers, as well as immediately collecting 10% of the cost of the you know, food that's on the farm? Um, hmm, interesting. As soon as it's built immediately gets some farm uh, food interesting so that could be OP <laughs> that could be OP yeah. but I think it's pretty good because it you know for someone like me who's make, who makes build orders um, it could be an interesting mechanic to play around with so we'll see what happens with that one uh, but speaking of build orders if you do want to make sure that you catch any build orders that are uploaded to the channel do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on those uploads and I've also done a video like this for the Bohemians which you can see a link to on the screen now so that's it for this one guys I'll see you in the next one